Warning, the stunts performed in this video are done by a trained fictional character on a closed virtual course. You should never get behind the wheel of a vehicle if you have been drinking. The Grand Theft Auto series, created by Rockstar Games, is a staple of the AAA game industry, with its most recent entry, GTA V, being its biggest title to date. Winning numerous industry awards and selling over 70 million copies, it is, at the time of this video, the fourth best-selling game of all time. This is not only due to its excellent story and gameplay, but also the wealth of activities the player can engage in. Minigames, races, even partying and getting drunk are available to the player. Namely, the ability to consume alcohol and see the effects not only on the screen, but also change your character's controls, is still a fairly new idea in games. But it's not the first time in the series that you could become drunk. Yes, in the previous mainline title, GTA 4, the player could also go to bars, become inebriated, and see the effects on their character in gameplay. During a recent discussion with a colleague, he brought up that not only did he think the drunk effects in GTA 4 were better than GTA 5, but that they were a near-perfect analog for being drunk. Is that true? Did the series really take a step backwards with the drunk system in GTA 5? Which game did it better? And how drunk are the characters really getting? We'll answer all these questions and more in the inaugural episode of Game Think. The Drunk System in GTA 5 Game Engine Grand Theft Auto V was created in Rockstar's proprietary game engine, Rage, or Rockstar Advanced Game Engine. Rage utilizes the illustrious Euphoria engine for its animations and AI behaviors. This system allows for organic and realistic movements in NPCs and players alike. This version of the game uses an overhauled version of the Rage for better visuals and rendering capabilities. How to become drunk The earliest the player can drink in story mode is after the third mission, Repossession. At this point, the player gains free roam control of Franklin. After a brief cutscene explaining the house's various features, walk to the kitchen and there will be a beer bottle to the left of the refrigerator and a prompt to drink it. Franklin takes about three drinks to start seeing the effect of the alcohol. Control changes. Strangely, the on-foot controls don't change that much. You still move in the direction you command and the response time is still fairly short. However, as the character staggers, their movement speed changes slightly to match their animation, speeding up and slowing down accordingly. But despite what you would think, the player controls remain as tight as ever. Animations The animations change to have the player stumble and stagger in a realistically drunk way. However, the characters don't lose their balance and fall over like you'd expect. For them to fall, you still need to be hit by something causing them to ragdoll. But when being hit and going ragdoll, the animations remain relatively unchanged. VFX A glassy screen effect covers the screen once the character is drunk. This effect intensifies slightly when drinking more, and naturally, the effect fades upon sobering up. Driving Like the on-foot movements, the driving controls are largely unaffected. The car does seem to veer slightly on straightaways, and it seems like the car does turn more sharply when turning. Though this effect could be psychosomatic, and the fact that I'm not sure is a clear indicator of how slight this change is. Audio the sounds become muted and cloudy, and any sounds that can be heard are echoey and processed. A faint staticky hum fades into obscure background sounds. The drunk system in GTA 4. Game Engine. Like in GTA 5, Grand Theft Auto 4 was created in Rage, and like its successor, it utilizes Euphoria for animations, albeit an obviously older version. How to become drunk. Getting drunk in the game is pretty simple. After completing the mission, First Date, the player merely has to go on a date with one of their contacts by calling them in the phone and selecting the drinking option. Then all you have to do is pick them up and drive them to a bar. Once pulling up to the bar, a brief cutscene will play and the screen will fade to black. When the screen fades back up from black, some time will have passed and either you or you and your date will be drunk. Control Changes Unlike in GTA 5, the on-foot controls become much more touchy. If Nico or any other drunk person loses their balance, they will topple over. The player can very easily lose control of their character as they stumble and trip. If the player tries to move in a direction too quickly, this could cause Nico to lose his balance and fall. Animations 
The animations do a decent job of showing the character to be drunk, and Euphoria adds an extra layer of realism, with them shifting their center of gravity and toppling over. Though this version of Euphoria does often make a few mistakes. Characters will often stumble backward endlessly, and limbs don't always move in the most realistic of ways. VFX The camera zooms in and out in a way that replicates not only the swaying of being drunk, but the head throbbing of being nauseous. This is one of the most effective parts of the GTA 4 drunk system, and really helps to sell the feeling. Driving When driving, the car has a tendency to veer and oversteer when trying to compensate. The player really gets the feeling that they're driving straight as they careen into oncoming traffic. Audio The overall sound doesn't actually change that much, though Nico's slurred speech is very immersive, and the things he and his friends talk about are appropriately thematic. So in conclusion, which game did it better? Control changes Because the way the character handles actually changes to any degree, GTA 4 is a more realistic portrayal of being drunk by default. Animations the updates to the Euphoria system in GTA 5 and the attention to detail makes the animations much smoother and less buggy. VFX What really sells the drunk effect in GTA 4 is the camera bobbing. It sways in a way that actually makes you feel a little ill. And though this is probably exactly why Rockstar decided to forego this effect in their sequel, this is some of the most immersive gameplay you will ever experience. Audio GTA 5 actually changes the way the character perceives sound in a very realistic way. The sound occlusion is not only immersive, but scientifically sound, if you'll pardon the pun. Overall realism. Besides the realistic loss of balance of the characters, and the driving giving the feeling that you're in control when you're actually not, the VFX in GTA 4 make the player actually experience what the character is going through. Despite GTA 5 having better visuals, audio, and controls for its drunk system, GTA 4 system is so immersive that you feel a little drunk as you play it. It accomplished what few other games can, make you experience what the character goes through. Make no mistake, the drunk system in GTA 5 has a lot of amazing elements to it, but their insistence on consistently accessible gameplay means this effect feels more Hollywood and less Las Vegas, if you get my meaning. Hey everyone, I had so much information on the subject that I couldn't fit it into just one video. So come back next time, where we break down the evidence and figure out how drunk they really are. Thank you so much for watching, be sure to subscribe for more videos, and please, drink responsibly.